Call the meeting to order at 6.03 p.m. Um, <clears throat> first item of business is, and, and first of all, actually, it, it, last meeting probably wasn't uh, a official enough, but um, welcome Fred to his first really true meeting, as opposed Thank to you. the meeting that Brian put together under the cloak of darkness. <laughs> um, I'm good at those. So... Anyway, meeting minutes from June 2nd, 2021 and the 21st, 2021. Uh, if people have had an opportunity to read the minutes, does anybody have any comments? I, I am going to abstain because I was not a member of the board for that first meeting. Okay. Um, then we'll do the meeting, the minutes for June 2nd first. Um, roll call vote, vote, God. Uh, I get, do we need to make the motions? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Do I hear a motion? I um, move that we uh, approve the meeting minutes. From, uh, well, honestly, from both meetings, but if Fred wants to abstain, maybe I should take him. Right, that's why I'm doing. That's why I'm doing one at a time. Okay, then uh, let's do the uh, June second. Uh, June second meeting. I uh, move that we accept those minutes. Second, uh, roll call vote. All those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Me, aye. And Fred, you abstain? Abstain. Okay. Uh, do I hear a motion to accept the meeting minutes from the 21st of June? I will move to accept the minutes from June 21st. No, I'll second that. Roll call vote. Vote. God. Um, <laughs> Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Been two years not. since you've been chair. What's that? Man. Been two years since you've been chair. I know. I, I well, because Joyce just signed on. Every time I want to say vote, I say void. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's my fault. Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, totally okay. my fault. And next item: vendor and payroll warrants. Um, does anybody have any issues with them, or can they be signed as is? No I issues. Have no comments. Nothing. Okay. Um, next item: public comments. For those, anything people want to talk about that is not currently on the agenda. Um, so I see. Con I see the public being uh, Paul Newland and Keith Bardwell. Do you guys want to talk about anything that's not on the agenda? <laughs> And no. I'm actually remiss. Amy's a member of the public too. <laughs> no, I well, one thing I, I emailed you, you all about was uh, using the town hall, but that can wait for next meeting, I guess. Okay, so no comments, no public comments. Old business, um, liaison assignments for fiscal 2022. Uh, Brian, you have the list of, of who had what last year? What do we got? We have. This is in the packet, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah I saw it in the packet. Yeah. I'm trying to desperately trying to pull it all up here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to share it here. I'm going to put it on the screen. Yep. Come on now. There we go. I found it on page 43. There we go. A lot of warrants. So this is just, this is last year. This these were the assignments. Mm hmm. Okay. Um, looking at these, if, if we just did a, 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 an even up trade with no changes, uh, Fred Barron would get fire, town administrator, uh, mm -hmm. and water. I think um, the past practice has been the chair has the town administrator. Right, exactly. And then, so Fred would be fire and water. I could keep police and schools, and then you would have town offices, town administrator, and what was the other one? Highway. Highway. 
Yeah, and town offices are are, are largely one and the same mm -hmm. as town administrator, I think. Um, actually, Brian, you're gonna have to refresh my memory. What's the re what's the what's the role of the town offices liaison? Um, so that's for all the other that's up for all the other departments that yeah. aren't necessarily under the select board. Right, 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 right. Okay, um, that's fine. I, I would just say that that you know I hate to say it, but I'm going to need a nudge about making sure that I I talk with the, the you know the clerk. I, the clerk doesn't fall into that though. Treasurer, accountant. Treasurer, uh, accountant. Yeah, the clerk, assessors, those, pretty much anybody who has an office here. So even though the clerk's elected, in theory. Yeah, I, I think liaison just is is. If, if we have an issue, you're the one that. Yeah, that's fine. That we go to on behalf of the select board. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Um, Fred Barron, do you do you are you okay with those assignments? I'm fine with those. I just have to get myself up to speed on the water situation, but that's doable. Yeah, okay. And obviously Wayne will walk you through that. Yeah, I want, I want to talk to Wayne and sort of get a, a, a tour of the various facilities. Well, and, and, and you get in your, in your the, the point person and in your lap is the merger. Thank so you very much. That'll be a lot of fun, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> Um, especially better, since better. I'm not on town water myself, so I nor am I, so yeah. yeah. Um, in fact, none of the three of us are. Joyce, none of are us you are, yeah. Water? No, we have it down here on Westbrook Road. Oh, okay. yeah, okay. So, is this a move or is this what do we do here, uh, Brian? Um, yeah, let's just do a motion to okay, okay. Do I hear and a motion to, 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 yeah. to take these assignments? I move uh, we second. accept the assignments with the revisions that have been made. Second. Uh, all those in favor? Fred? Aye. Joyce? Aye. Me? Aye. Okay. Thank you. And hey, Brian or Amy, can I ask that you guys email out those assignments to us so we, you know, we have it in our email yep. boxes? Just a simple don't forget. Yep. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. And um, Brian, if you can just send me Wayne, I probably have it someplace, Wayne's contact information. Sure. Okay. Um, official speed limit for Conway Road. Brian? I'll defer to Keith on that one. All right. Um, I can... <clears throat> This has sort of been a uh, topic for quite some time in regards to Conway Road. Presently is one road left out in West Whaley that is um, not posted for speed right at the moment. Um, primarily because the road is has varying conditions and one part of it is gravel one, and the other half of it's paved. Um, in the past, Mass DOT did not, they, they only looked at roads as a whole and we have the issue where we're looking at doing a complete street. One of the complete street portions of that grant is to do some work around the area of Williamsburg Road and Conway Road and looking to slow traffic down, especially as they come down the hill past the reservoir and enter that S curve where everything gets a little tighter and narrower. And in doing so, one of the things that is present right now is a single lane unposted road by mass general law is 40 miles an hour. So for the police department to go in there and do anything, they've got to at least work with 40. And then and usually in many cases, they're looking always at maybe five to 10 miles an hour of another leeway. So you can be looking to 45 to 50 before they're gonna cite somebody which is way too fast. So what we need to find out, number one, is can we split the road into sections and will Mass DOT allow us to get a speed assessment for the paved portion of it from like Weber Road intersection to um, 
to the Conway Town Line. And that's more important than the section from Haydenville Road to the gravel section in my mind. Um, but anyways, part of what we would need to do is also, if we're able to is have the speed assessment done is get the police department needs to go out there and do um, the speed analysis and spend many hours running radar and recording what's presently going on out there. I do remember when we had um, Beth from the FERCOG in here a while back, she had made the comment that they might be able to help out in that speed assessment too. So um, that's, I just think we need to formally, um, whether it be a letter to the NAS DOT from the select board, but we need to find out what what our you know what our next step is so that we can move forward with this because definitely and that's one of the reasons why why Paul's here is because he contacted me again recently wanting to know what could be done and and that's that's where we're at. Does does the conversation that I've seen take place again recently I think and I forget where I saw it and it could have been in one of these meetings where there's been conversation again about the complete paving of all of Conway Road. Wouldn't that impact this process? It, it would, however, to deal with the environmental issues on Conway Road that would need to be addressed. It is going to be, um, it will be another road like the, the price tag on Haydenville Road, something that that we cannot obtain ourselves. Um, okay. it, we're talking millions of dollars for that to happen. To have, because um, definitely if you're going to pave the road, you really need to put in um, better, you know, better um, guardrail. You need to have wider um, shoulders, which means the culverts need to be um, longer which means they need to be replaced and it would be very expensive to do that okay and it was never a county road i assume was it yes it is county layout it's county road, but that doesn't that doesn't impact the funding no okay thoughts comments i First. have a question my understanding is as far as <clears throat> Um, speeding is concerned. It's really people coming down that paved portion of Conway Road by the reservoir where it's you're going downhill and downhill and downhill. It's really easy <coughs> to get going too fast as you're coming in down there towards that group of houses at the, kind of at the bottom of the, the reservoir there. And I think that my understanding is that the problem is less of a matter of speeding along that section of Conway Road that's between Weber Road and Haydenville Road, where a good chunk of that is the, the unpaved gravel road. Um, would you agree with that general characterization? I'm not saying that no one ever speeds on the gravel road. I'm just saying that the, it, it might be easier to just deal with the part that we think is a problem as part of our complete streets. And if we have to also do the, the paved road, if this is really complete streets driven, then maybe we have to do the whole thing. But it seems like, I, I don't, I guess I don't necessarily understand, is this driven by trying to comply with complete streets or is this something where the, you know, the residents are rightly concerned about uh, the speed of cars coming down the road there? Well, it's, it's, it's both in the aspect that, for instance, one of the things that we were looking to do is to put up a radar board in that area and it's sort of i just don't feel it's worth putting up a radar board saying that oh, it's okay to go 40 miles an hour as you enter that and that's what we 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 don't have anything else to work with other than the current mass general law which is 40 miles an hour and so yeah, that's I think why it, we need to work probably on that. shouldn't yeah i guess the only other comment i would would add is that I don't think this is a job we should assign to our police to sit out there and take traffic data. I think the FERCOG is really good at that. They've got the equipment 
to do that. So we should get a speed study. Now their speed studies, they often want to put what's the speed limit in there and do everything compared to what that speed limit is. But like, what do we need in order to get a reasonable determination of what the speed limit should be? Is that what you were talking about before? It's, what they've done for us in the past is not what we need now. Uh-huh. Um, what they've well, done they before is put in this. What? FERCOG or the state when you say they? FERCOG. Okay. What they've done for us in the past was putting in the, you know, the traffic counters with the mm. two rubber hoses that go across the street, which, which can give you speed da data. But mm. that's not acceptable. You need to sit there and run radar with a radar gun. And in most cases, that's the only way you're going to get that done is with the police department. However, FERCOG did say that they had recently acquired, um, a, I believe it's a handheld unit. So mm -hmm. I just don't know how stretched out they are in whether the other 25 cities and towns in Franklin County mm -hmm. are asking them to do this also. I'm just okay. saying maybe it can be a joint venture between our police department and FERCOG. And I guess my suggestion is that the select board number one, write a letter to, you know, to the mass DOT district two um, requesting what we need to do to formally get a speed assessment, considering that part of Conway road is gravel and ask if there's any way that the road can be split in half and only have a speed assessment on one part of it. And then number two is to get the, if they say it can be done, then we go to FERCOG and the Waitley Police Department and get it done. I, I would add to that letter. I think that's a great idea, Keith. I think that part of the letter should include the reality that Conway Road in theory will be, will have higher traffic counts now because of the opening of Williamsburg Road. So it will be a, a, a cut through for some people at least. And so, yes. you know, and, and, and there's no question, if you're going 40 miles an hour on the S curve part of, you're, you're, you're probably gonna be in the drink. I mean, I don't, I don't see how you go around that. Hi, uh, John. Yeah. Uh, one way you go around it, if you're coming down the hill from Conway, is that you leave the right lane and you go into the left lane and hug the curve on the left lane so that you can sort of slide by that corner and make it if you're going 40 miles an hour. If you're going 50, you're not gonna make it probably. Right. Uh, luckily, in my memory, we've had very few accidents there, which is remarkable, given there's no arrow signs at the bottom of the road before you get to that really sharp turn on the S-curve. Right. Um, there have been some accidents, but to my memory over uh, 40 years or so. It's been remarkably free of accidents, but there's a lot of speeding that takes place there. So the natives who use that road primarily in the morning are aware of the turn <laughs> and they have to slow down somewhat, right. but they're still going well over 20 miles an hour. I can envision a 20 mile an hour zone for that immediate S-curve area. And I know that that would be very popular with uh, my new new there's a new family the baronis is on the corner of uh weber and conway and the mahars and the uh Yvans who live across right next to them across the bridge on the bottom of poplar hill they have a new child and um, then we have my neighbor across the street dave and mariana Dave is disabled, and so speeding cars are a hazard to him. And of course, we live on the curve, as did the Bellamare. So, you know, people going 40 and, uh, you know, cramming on the brakes just in time not to lose the road is a hazard. Right. And that's oh, been I, for I, years. Well, yeah. I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I, the, to, what I was going to finish the comment with, I don't know how you do that safely. Um, you know, at least even on Haydenville Road, you have that mirror that, dem that, that shows oncoming traffic that you may not be able to see uh, as, you're, as you're approaching the Waitley Inn. There's not even a mirror there to see what the oncoming traffic is. So it's just a, 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 a life-threatening disaster waiting to happen. And honestly, 
it's an environmental disaster waiting to happen if you get a, a bad car accident and those things end up in the in the in the in the brook. It, so, it, it doesn't sound like we've got any disagreement. It sounds like we just need to yeah. uh, come Correct. up with a proper legal procedure for designating a species, you know, what, right. so what I, research I believe, we need to get done. I believe one of us on this call is a, is a, a lawyer. Um, not he also happens to be the town administrator. So uh, I think there's two now. Oh, is Fred a lawyer? I didn't know that. Yes. No. Oh, okay. So you're recommending Fred do it? I am already. <laughs> <laughs> um, Keith, who yeah, would we, fine. Who would we send need, a letter to? Do we need to do a motion or just send a letter to, to, to DOT, the, the, the district chief? Or, or should we con at least informally contact FERCOG and see if they know what the procedures would be? before we start just sort of randomly firing off letters. Because they do have their traffic department that probably at least knows about this, even if they're not the agency to handle it. We, we could ask Beth if she obtained that information. Um, we, we did talk about it in general a little bit with her the last time. And she didn't have an answer at the time as to whether it could be separated, but um, so, I mean, maybe we can contact her again, but ultimately I just think it really needs a, a letter to go to district two. Okay. Chief engineer. Yeah. I was going to say, you know, at most send a, a, a joint letter, um, or at least CC the cog to make sure that they're aware, but Fred, I think we're going to get a quicker response from DOT potentially. Okay. But. So is that right, we'll send, for a motion, Brian, or what? Or we'll send a letter. We'll send a letter. I don't know that you need a motion, but. Yeah. Okay. So we'll figure out whether we can post a split paved gravel road. And if we can't, what the process will be to do that. And if they say no, then we'll talk to Natalie and Joe and complain. Right. right. It just, it's amazing to me that there isn't just already a Oh, you want to put a speed limit on a road? Here's how. Here's the steps you have to do. It doesn't seem like that exists, and that's amazing to me. Right. So it, it's amazing to me that you can go faster on Conway Road than you can on Swamp Road. Yeah. It, it also doesn't make sense that you have to have one speed limit for a road that you can't recognize dangerous parts of a road mm -hmm. to, for a lower speed limit. Well, the it, also, that, it, it doesn't make sense that you can't even post on a gravel road. Well, the reason for that, and that's this is what Mass DOT, Mass DOT will mm -hmm. tell you, is that the conditions of the road vary too much. Mm -hmm. In other words, when, when it's, for instance, mud season, the, the road has a different road surface condition, and it cannot tolerate the same speeds it can in the middle of the summer. So that's what they're going to tell you. And that's why they do not allow gravel roads to be posted is because of the varying conditions of the road surface. That, that just is, 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 is mine now. But okay. <laughs> um, all right. So Brian, you'll craft the letter. Yep. Okay. Thank you all. I'm going to leave. Good to see you again. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, Paul. See you later, Paul. Bye-bye. Okay, um, for collective highway bids, we want to uh, um, give Brian authority to make some signatures. What's the, give us an example, Brian, about what, what you would be signing. So we actually authorized, um, in my short sightedness, we authorized Fred Orlowski to, to sign the contracts at the June 2nd meeting and then the election happened. So now we don't have an authorized signatory. Um, I have all the contracts, they're DocuSign, they're in my email box. Um, it's all the regional highway bids, liquid asphalt, cold planning and milling contract, catch basin contract. Um, just Without all the checking the minutes, did you authorize Fred Orlowski or did you authorize the board chair? Um, we authorized, the way that the form read, this is the first year that FERCOG has done it. Hmm. We authorized by name. Okay. And it, they're, they're warning the bumps in the process. Okay. I, I have no problem, Brian. 
Yeah, I would um, like to then make a motion that uh, we authorize Brian to sign these contracts. A second. Okay, Brian, you'll be my concierge. Yeah. Um, uh, all those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yep. Okay. And if it keeps raining like this, you're gonna need to send a boat down here. I know. <laughs> okay. No, it's it's right. it's really coming down. Yeah. All right. Um discuss and make select board appointments for fiscal 2022. Yeah. These are annual annual appointments that are within the discretion of the select board. I do have yeah. um I just want to show you I did make four edits to the police department one. Um, and it's these two, um, and talking with Jim, Joshua Thomas, um, and Jeffrey Baker need to come off and Zachary Libanow and Elizabeth Unitas, um, <coughs> I need to come on. Okay. Okay. Do you want to just for, 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 uh, for, uh, giggles, you want to just go through the whole list? Is that for me or the board? I was I was suggesting you, but the, I'm looking for insight from the board whether uh, yeah. they want to do that or not. Yeah, I think scrolling down through it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I scrolled through most of it. I, there was only one place that I remember having a question, and I'm happy to wait until we get to that part on Brian's screen. Well, I'm, I've got a question out of, out of the gate. Um, I'm under the impression if things flow the way I think they're going to flow, that Amy is not going to be the administrative assistant anymore. She will. She will be in that role until we hire the replacement. Okay. okay. Graciously, I might add. Okay. Uh, uh, so let me just run through these quick. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, administrative assistant Amy Schrader, town accountant, is through the FERCOG program. Daro. Oh, sorry to interrupt. When yep. it says term expires twenty twenty one. I think that means June 30th, unless it says otherwise. Yes. Okay, great, yep. thanks. Um, Dara LaPlante, um, Town Council, Complimented Page, Superintendent of Streets, Keith, Keeper of the Pound, Dan Dennehy, Tree Warden, Keith, um, Sergeant, so this is Public Safety Sergeant, Donald Bates, Part-Time Police Officers, Randa Williams, James Purcell, Mark Bryden, Edwin Zaneski, Raymond Vandalowski, Christian Vijay, Adam Zaneski, Brandon Iavecchia, Zachary Liebenau, Elizabeth Unatis, Fire Chief and Forest Warden, John Hanna, Emergency Management Director, Lynn Sibley, Assistant Emergency Management Director, Alan Sanderson, Hazardous Waste Coordinator, Fran Fortino, Municipal Right to Know Coordinator, John Hanna, Inspectors and Inspection Services. Um, so this is the town's representative to the Franklin County Cooperative Inspection Program, Jim Ross, Franklin County Cooperative Inspection Program, provides our building inspector, who's Jim Hawkins, wiring inspector, Tom McDonald, plumbing inspector, Andy French, inspector of animal and barns, Rick Adamcheck, weights and measures is provided through Northampton Co-op Auction, so Janet Land, Kim Reardon, Samantha Vanos, Linda Davenport, Hey, hey, Brian, can I just stop you right there? Um, yeah. These can be changed if we want to midstream, correct? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, keep going. Uh, fence viewers, that was close. Fence viewers and field drivers. Um, AIN is David Chamuka, Richard uh, Adamchek, and there's one vacancy. Veteran services. I was, I was one of those once, and I didn't know what it was. So anyone can really get a. You want to be added? No. All right. I nominate John. No. <laughs> Should I be um, nominated? I will decline. Or, I nominate Fred. <laughs> no. All right. Well, I think you got to vote before you can reject the appointment. Okay. Um, All right. Veterans agent is for the Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District. Uh, rep town's representative is Don Sluter, uh, Veterans Graves Off Veterans Graves Officer. Uh, Ray Belisle, General Government Register of 
registrars of voters, Amy Schrader, ZBA, uh, Roger Lipton for the full three-year term alternates. These are one-year terms, Federal Losty, uh, Kristen Vivon, ADA coordinator, me, Brian Domina, uh, Conscom, Ann Barker, Tritown Beach Committee, Jonathan Edwards, Andy Mahalik. There's a vacancy there. Is, is that vacancy a Waitley appointed vacancy or is that? No, it, it's it's Waitley. Deerfield has their own. Waitley, yep. Okay, that's just Waitley. Yeah. Okay. That is a Waitley vacancy. Um, Rec Commission, Justin Davis, Jonathan Edwards, Carol Hakoski, Wayne Hakoski, Chris Williams, Shelly Yaga, Zinsky, Amy Schrader, Jake Schrader, Megan Wenzel. Take Megan Wenzel off. Okay. So that's a vacancy. Did she resign? Word of mouth resignation, yep. And, and not having been to a meeting in about a year. Uh, Historical Commission, Donna Wiley, Dar uh, Darcy Tozier. Energy Committee, Jonathan Edwards, uh, Nat Fortune, Paul Newland, Cultural Council, Julie Wagoner, George Reynolds, uh, Rena Vijay, Rena Vijay, Jenny Morrison, Rich Korpieski. Is that S with Reynolds? Yeah, I assume that's Reynolds. Yeah. Just so we're, just so we have the accurate list. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want to get George Reynolds there. We want George Reynolds. Right. I heard George Reynolds isn't a good guy, but I like George Reynolds a lot. Yeah. Adcom, Margaret Christie, Doug Caldwell, Coldwell, uh, Council on Aging, Katie McGrail, Lois Hunt, Cable TV Advisory Committee. Um, is that met in a long time? Randy we Sibley. Have, we have not met in a long time. That's Joyce, true. Joyce Palmer Fortune. That's okay. It's a good committee, yeah. I hear, though. No, if thanks. You can, you can get uh, on it. You should. Can I ask a real quick question? There's a couple of these that didn't have term expires, um, like the um, cable advisory and the energy committee. Is there yep. a reason why they don't say term expires? Does that mean you're like on there for life? Yeah, I think they're lifetime appointments, like federal lifetime judgeships. Okay. Yeah, like right. judgeships. Okay. All right. I, it was also the same. So one of the ones that that I took off here was municipal building committee um, that hasn't met in six years mm. um and we can always reappoint to that if there's ever a need for that um housing committee uh fred orlowski katherine wolkowitz richard tilburg fred Barron, housing trust frederick orlowski katherine wolkowitz the reason that those don't uh, mirror each other uh, the housing trust is staggered terms um, mm. so it's on a different schedule um, yeah. For COG representatives, Lynn Sibley, and I would be the alternate. Um, Franklin County Solid Waste District, Quint Dawson. Uh, Franklin County Transit Authority, Frederick Orlowski. Um, other officials, Capital Improvement Planning Committee. So uh, according I, to the town- I, I will take that if there's no objection. I would nominate Fred to take the vacancy <laughs> on the select board um, member to join the capital improvement committee. I would second that. All those. Oh well, should we vote? Do we vote on the individual, Brian, or do we wait till the end? We can wait till the end if if you if you want to do it. Okay. Less. Um. So that includes myself as a non-voting member, Fred Barron, Marie Nichols as the schools representative, Darcy Tozer, Nicholas Jones, Dan Kennedy, and uh, Brant. Sorry, Brant. I always botch his last name. Uh. Chikes. 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 Chikes sounds good. Um, CPC, Donna Wiley. Uh, Personnel Committee, um, Joyce, if she's willing. Um, mm -hmm. And then these are uh, the 250th Anniversary Committee members. Do we, Thank my only thought actually, on that is with both Joyce and Fred on it, do we need to, um, does that mean this has to be posted as a select board meeting every time they meet? Because that's awkward. I don't if, no, if I, I don't read think the, so. if I read the open meetings law correctly, as long as we don't discuss matters that are under the purview of the select board, then we can be in the same meeting together. Okay, well, we'll, we'll trust you guys not to whisper in the corner. 
Oh, okay. All right. No breakout no, right, rooms on Zoom. Okay. Of the no anyway, breakout rooms. So. Right. The virtual corners, whispering in the right. corners. The breakout. Yeah, I remember rooms. the open, open meeting. And I had on the piece. Oh, you know, was the um, the police sergeant. Isn't that the contract, or is that just an appointment and they continue with whatever? Because so, I know with the, with the police chief, there's a contract that gets negotiated every three years. Yeah, I don't think Don has a contract. Don does not have a contract. Okay. All right. Good. I wanted. I just wanted to make sure I understood that. Thanks. Yep. Okay. Um, and uh, I'd also like to thank Amy because. In the past, this list has been a absolute mess, and it's a lot better now. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you, Amy. Thank you. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll move acceptance of that list as amended. I'll second that. Okay, voice voice roll call. All those in favor? Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Yes. All right. Knock that one out. And next up is uh, vacancy for the operator laborer position with the highway department. I'll take this one, Keith. All right. Um, Brian and I did um, four interviews last week. And at this point in time, we had come up with the recommendation to the board of Maxwell Bartlett, lives in Hatfield. Um, he's presently working part-time at the Hatfield Highway Department, and they're sort of been leading him along thinking that they were going to appoint him, which they decided they, at least in this year's budget, they're, they're not going to add any more staff. So, um, he's not interested in staying there anymore so that's why he came looking um but very very good um very good qualifications um having grown up on the family farm and the fact that the family has much history in working with um heavy equipment excavators loaders things like that um he has um got a lot of experience already and so it's i guess it's fair to say that you know it's my recommendation that the select board appoint him as a full-time employee okay would you re uh, remind me his name again because that's not in the actual uh, i'm looking at the agenda and i don't see his name in the agenda maxwell bartlett maxwell bartlett okay I'd be happy to make the motion to uh, appoint Maxwell Bartlett to the um, position in the highway department. I will second that. Um, all those in favor, voice vote. Joyce? Aye. Uh, Fred? Yes. And because I knew one of the candidates, I'm going to abstain just because I don't think it's appropriate, but I'd rather abstain. Okay. Uh, next up is vote and accept the resignation of Lynn Sibley as town clerk. Yeah. I understand that uh, to, to not accept it would uh, be the same result as to accept it, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's not coming in tomorrow. <laughs> right, right. So, so, so I, th I think we probably should accept it because um, I think it's neater that way. But um, uh, I, you know, we would miss her dearly. I'm glad she would be staying on as treasure collector to be around for. And I would for, say uh, we should accept it with our tremendous thanks as a town for the job she's yeah. done over these many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a letter might be in order, or maybe even some flowers. That's what I was thinking. 22 years. Wow, 22 years. I'm not even that old. Okay. Who's going to watch? <laughs> All right. Um, um, so, yeah, so let's, um, uh, can we, because I, I know I don't have time. 
does anyone wander by Les house that maybe we yeah. I'll take care of, I'll take care of the flowers I go there pretty regularly okay and then we can and then we can divvy up money when we when we see each other yeah if we ever see each other in person again sure yeah <laughs> but yeah let's not forget because we I don't want to I don't want to be in arrears okay <laughs> Okay, um, so I guess a, a voice vote um, to accept the resignation. We need a, a, a nominate a, a, um, a motion. I move that we accept the resignation of our town clerk, Lynn Sibley. Aye. We'll second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me. Yep. All right. Um, to discuss and vote to appoint Amy Schrader as town clerk until the next annual election. Um, Amy, do you want to, you know, go on mute for a little while so we can talk about you? <laughs> I, I told her we were going to ask her questions, so. Exactly. Mm. What makes right. you qualified to be town clerk? <laughs> what uh, makes you want to be town clerk? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Hey, would would you, no, would you know you what, though? Be willing to collect this, signatures next time. You get this annual junket to Cape Cod. <laughs> Yes, um, you do. I, you know, I have I have nothing but good things to say about Amy. Um, but if anyone asks, I didn't say that. No. Um, so do we just want to do we want to talk about her? Do you guys want to make a motion? Well, I don't. I think I think. Do you have a? Like, are you willing to collect signatures next year if you feel the same way about this job? At that point. Yes. Yep. Well, okay. All right. It's ten of them. Is it ten of them, or do they need more for the clerk? No, I think it's like I think it's twenty it was, good signatures. It was oh, twenty this year. Town clerk yeah, candidate. How many good signatures yeah. does a person need to get on the local ballot? Pop quiz time. Well, quiz. here's the question. Actually, is it the clerk that the when I've submitted signatures in the past for a variety of things, the clerk is the one that accepts them and all that. So does Amy accept her own signatures? No. Right. Where's the check and balance? Lynn would accept them as the assistant town clerk. Oh, so she's still staying on as assistant town clerk. Yep. Mm -hmm. I would be removed from that election in June of 2022. Okay. All right. Um, I have I have no reservations about Amy no going way. to that job. Okay. Uh, I, I move that we appoint Amy to the uh, town clerk position until the next election. I second that. Voice vote. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me, yep. Congratulations, nope. Amy. Oh, I don't get a vote. <laughs> um, okay, vacancy on the Frontier Regional School Committee to consider voting to appoint a representative until the next election. Uh, Brian, I understand that this was a whoops by town staff and that, and that Bill Smith did all the right things to get on the ballot and he was he was not um, yeah. The ballot. yeah so so my understanding was that was that when the the local ballot was submitted to the secretary of state that the that the position of frontier school committee rep wasn't submitted and it was noticed later mm. um so it, it wasn't the situation where sometimes happens where somebody forgets to pull nomination papers and that's kind of, you know, on the candidate and they have to run a write-in. He couldn't run a write-in because there was essentially no election no for that position. Write it on. Uh, um, I understand. So, I mean, the way it works is that it, it's considered a vacancy um, according to our town council. Um, so it's within the select board's purview to appoint somebody until the next annual election, at which time that position would <laughs> be on the ballot. Ha, ha, ha. Um, when when that comes up next year on the ballot, will it be for a full? What what's the term length? Three years. I think three it's three years. years. So would it be for a full three year term at that point, or an unexpired two year term? It'd be two year because he's feeling he's doing one now. Um, that's a good question. I don't know the answer off the top of my head. I would um, imagine it's, we're filling a a, a a vacancy right now. Yeah, I, I would really, imagine it's two years yeah. also, but. It it's could somehow reset the years. clock to three yeah. years. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, yeah, I didn't realize that that was how the um, vacancy came about. And if um, Phil is still willing to, to do it, I would 
nominate Bill to fill that vacancy until the next election. Poor guy, I second that. Signatures again next year. Oh, he needs to collect like twenty signatures. I know, but still, I'll no. I was gonna say I'll sign. I'll sign anybody's papers. I know. Yeah, anyway, it's still a pain. Okay. Um, all those in favor, Joyce. Aye. Fred. Aye. Me. Aye. Yep. Okay. Next on the hit parade, office building schedule effective July first, twenty twenty one. Brian, what do you recommend? Yep. So, <clears throat> I received a request that. Um, that the office, uh, which is open to the public on Fridays from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. right now, um, that it be closed to the public on Fridays. Um, hmm. All of our, well, most of our positions other than mine are part-time positions, town clerks 22, treasurer collectors 30. Um, hmm. Assistant assessors is 19. Um, accountants here one day a week. Um, and then my uh, administrative assistant is 24 hours per week. Um, this wouldn't change my schedule at all. I, I usually work in the office from, from eight to noon on Fridays. Um, but what's gonna happen if, if, those, what's, if the town clerk isn't there and the treasurer collector's not there, um, what usually happens is people come in expecting, you know, to pay a bill out the window or they want a receipt for, for a, a payment or they wanna get a dog license or they wanna, Everybody seems to think they can get marriage intentions on a Friday and get married on Sunday. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing I can really do is ask them to put it in a Dropbox. Um, so we're really set, we're setting up expectations that we're open to the public when lucky them, they just get me. Um, <laughs> and I can't really, I, I can't really do much. Um, yeah. So did it used to be that happened. someone was there, either clerk or collector, on Fridays, but is that, so is that a new thing that um, uh, due to the kind of the change in personnel? Yeah, yep. And, and yeah, this usually would be firm, this isn't just a summer thing. This is, would be well, full time. Well, my recommendation is that, is that we, what's, uh, for a lot of things we usually give it, give it a try and then, mm -hmm. um, you know, we will reassess. So I was recommending, you know, do it through the summer and see how it goes. if. You know, if a lot of people are coming in on Friday, you know, coming in on Friday mornings when I'm here, I'm going to see them. And then that might make sense to to reassess. But I don't want to have the expectations that the building's open and then mm. it, it's my only my only thought. And, and it, I don't think it is germane to building being open, but um, towns that I know that are, their offices are, quote unquote, closed on Fridays, the only Hassle is meeting persons. Is what? Meet the posting and postings. So if someone wants a meeting on on a Tuesday, they got to do it then on a Thursday. So it's more than forty eight hours. I just wish there was some way if we're going to have offices technically closed on Fridays that there was a mechanism in place so that people could still post meetings on on a Friday. Mm. Again, it really is, it's, it's either an unknown or it's a whoops or something. And all of a sudden people who want to meet on Tuesday suddenly can't, and you know, it's just, it's just a hassle. Yeah, that would be a discussion with the town clerk. Can I say, <laughs> um, so lately the way Lynn, Lynn and I have been working it out is one of us has been checking the agenda at waitley.org email on Fridays. Um, if Lynn was on vacation, I would do it. If So my plan would be to continue to bring a laptop home to be able to monitor my email throughout the day, to be able to post to the website, which is our official posting location, to be able to accommodate, you know, the times when those Tuesday meetings or, you know, the last minute agendas come in that we can, we can make that work out. Um, Cause I, I think, I, I understand that could come up. So I, I don't want to, um, you know, have that become an issue. Cause it's like, a, it's a two minute thing to post a meeting, right? Yeah. For the most part. Um, I mean, sometimes, you know, you'll get the agenda come in at two on a Friday and then they'll want the meeting on Tuesday at three. So, you know, you do have sometimes a quick turnaround time to get it up there, but, um, mm. you know, it's all, it's definitely, pretty easy to do okay yeah i mean is that okay 
to do on your nominally on your day off or are you working some of your hours from home so this would count as work time that you're you know monitoring emails for things that are important to do on, on a friday right now i had it planned for the 22 hours to be worked um monday through thursday mm -hmm. um due to that i don't have daycare on fridays um mm -hmm. and so i could factor in you know taking an hour out or or less of maybe a half hour and put that on the Fridays when mm -hmm. um, I didn't really think it through all the way. I was just going to have my email pop up on my phone. And if one came in, I would just go and no, post okay. it. Um, I didn't really. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's great flexibility on your part, but I, I don't want it to become um, a burden. Like, mm -hmm. oh, we're not, we're, we're, we're closed on Fridays. Oh, except if you want Amy to do something, then you should just email her. It's just really working Fridays, right? I wonder whether it's also a situation where in a pinch, the town administrator would have the ability to post a meeting. I do have the ability and I have. All right, now, then the problem solved. We can copy Amy and Brian. And, but again, it's not ideal and, and people should know that it's not ideal. Well, I, I, would, I would think we should publicize this, you know, put it on the website, the town offices will be closed on Friday. Maybe put a, a line in the scoop that the town offices from now on um, will be closed yeah, on well, That won't be till September. <laughs> well, um, but, but, but a robocall. If, if this is an ongoing thing. Yeah. Right. Just right. as much publicity as we can get. But yeah. I think, yeah, the, on, the, on the website at the very least early on. Yeah. Um, I think make sure, making sure that committee chairs and department heads are aware so that they can plan accordingly. Um, yeah, I think it would be useful to to adopt a. Uh, um, well, I'll I'll give advice to the town clerk, but uh, t you know, post something that says for meetings on Tuesdays you need to get me something by Thursday, and then deal with. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and a, a Scott's laws when the, when they happen, so that it's not an expectation that. And an across the board email to all the the department to the department heads and committee chairs that the offices will be closed on Fridays from now on. And I, I, I have noticed that there's a significant decrease in the number of people coming through mm -hmm. um, since the pandemic, which is understandable, uh, but there's not a lot of people coming through. Okay, so um, do I hear a motion? Yeah, I'll move that we adopt the Closing out the hours for the town offices, as proposed. Uh, I'll second. All those in favor, Fred. Aye. Joyce. Aye. Me. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Good. Knock that out. Um, a request from Representative Blaze to um, about municipal spending priorities. Yeah. So I think we all received the email from Natalie. Um, it was a request of, of the town's top three municipal spending priorities. She had asked it for, uh, to be sent June 18th. Um, and she, I asked her if we could send it after the June 30th meeting so we could at least have a discussion, um, as to. I have to remind what, myself of what the, what was the context for that? Uh, was this, I, um, like COVID money or. Uh, uh, not infrastructure money because that's not passed yet. Um, yeah, I think it's forward looking towards. Yeah, I thought it was infrastructure money. Even though that the had infrastructure money. Yes. Oh, okay. It was. Hey, if 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 the state gets you know billions of dollars, how do you want to spend it? East West and Rail. East West Rail. That's there's that's my. It, it, are these municipal priorities or regional priorities, Brian? Well, it's spending priorities for it. It's I understand it was for the town, but oh, it doesn't okay. mean that the town can't have a regional priority. Yeah. Um, touch base with your top three municipal budget priorities. <clears throat> and this does not include infrastructure money that would be in that we have talked about in the past for infrastructure like connecting water and things like that. 
It's these are two separate buckets of money, correct? Yeah, the 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 one we're discussing now is theoretical money that would come from the federal government. Well, but so is the money that's coming to if we want to connect water loops, that's federal government money as well. Yeah, that's more certain that we're going to get that. I but get we it. haven't done that yet, so it could be a priority. I just want to make sure that we're talking about two separate pools of money so that yep. we have six things to ask for instead of the same three for both pools and then we're stuck short. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's separate. Um, I mean, the one thing that comes to mind um, is the highway garage for me. Um, that's going to be a big ticket item whenever the town decides it needs to tackle that. Um, cause it, it's certainly a need and also related to that is I, I think there's going to some, there's going to need to be a decision done with, um, what happens with the transfer station as part of that discussion. Um, cause that there's not a ton of space on that existing lot on that current lot right now. Yeah. So for, I mean, we, we don't necessarily have to think of it in terms of an exact, like specific project, but it sounds to me like money to do capital improvements to our buildings and other infrastructure is important because uh, you wouldn't call the transfer station a building necessarily either. I was thinking similarly for um, you know energy improvements in all of our buildings um, and that that, that kind of comes under you know, it's a capital improvement right it's something where you need the upfront money to do something. Um, be it the highway department, be it whatever is the next tragedy that befalls the school or um, or any of our other buildings. If we're looking for wish list things, I would put money for rehabilitation and upgrade of the center, or just rehabilitation of the center school, because it's going to be expensive and we've got no particular place where it's coming, even though we don't know what we're going to use it for. I mean, yeah. We're, Fred, I think we're jumping ahead on that one. I mean, we, we haven't decided what direction we're taking on that. So I. Well, but this money hasn't even been appropriated by Congress yet. So we're just. Right. <laughs> um, we're talking wish lists. Yeah. So. What, kind of, what kind of dollars are we talking about? Most of the towns have submitted million dollar, millions of dollar projects. I mean, it's all pie in the sky it's right now. Monopoly money. Hmm. I, I would argue that we should be asking for, and that the other, and that Sunderland and Deerfield would do the same that we would ask for money for a senior center. It's the biggest, it's the biggest hole we have in, the, in, in, in terms of service delivery in the three towns right now. And there's no question about that. The, the senior center building that we have at South Deerfield, and this is not an, an indictment on, on the people in Deerfield at all. Um, it, it's, it is a colossal disaster. It is, it's just not a good place. Um, yeah, and I would nice. I would argue um, going for like a senior slash community center might even be better. Yeah, I I, I agree, and and, yeah. and 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 really make that a priority because that's something that it's going to be a, a lot of money even for the state to come up with. If you can get Congress to, to do it as a as a senior slash community center, I think Joe, you're that's you know. Adding community. I would agree. I think you get better buy-in from well the community part of. Uh, granted, seniors are a large part of our community, but I think to get the whole community in there would be even better. Yep, I I, I agree. We got to get the other two towns to buy in. I am sure that I can get them to buy in. Mm -hmm. that, that's not even a question. I I mean I, I don't know where this was obtained, but an email I got um, that said what Deerfield asked for. Was $19 million for the sewer plant, $12 million for the sewer piping, and $5 million for portions of River Road that are slipping into the Connecticut River. So they did not include anything towards the senior. So they've already made their request. And, Con and Conway did $9 million for a safety complex, $2.12 million for dam and bridge work, and $8 million for other items. And Sunderland has requested eight air conditioning for their elementary school and safety complex, an electric van and two charging stations for senior transport and $6 million for sewer extension. So that gives you an idea of what the other three towns have done. And so I, I mean, I sort of think, but Brian, one of the 
ideas that Brian had and the town of Waitley has no doubt about us is going to be facing in the in the near future is the highway department. Um, yeah. The building was built yep. in 1960. And as we already know, we've been through um, issues where we can't do things that we want to do there because it's just not feasible. And mm. so the building has reached its, its, you know, limits. It cannot, we can't yeah. expect to go much longer with it. And yeah. knowing what the prices are in public construction, you know, and dealing also with the transfer station, we're probably looking at seven, eight, maybe even $9 million for a combined. In there. I, I think combining it with the transfer station would be good to put the environmental component onto it. Mm -hmm. Not just a highway department, but call it all one big project. And, and I guess the other thing we haven't thrown in here yet, if we're doing pie in the sky, then let's get the let's get the Tri Town Beach, uh, make that into a, a destination, make that into a, a nice public park facility. So there's our three. There's a local senior community center, um, highway garage. And, um, and try -town rehabilitating Beach. the Tritown Beach. There's, I think we could call each of those like an even 10 million. I, I think each of them would be, I mean, Tritown would be a little little shy of that, but I think the senior center is easily going to be 10 million and the, and the highway garage is easily going to be 10 million. Yeah. Is that what you're saying, Joyce? Yeah. 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 I rounded everything to 10. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I would even go for, you know, if we got 10 million for a senior center, heck, I, I have no problem taking our $10 million and placing it in South Deerfield if that's the logical location for a senior center. I, I'm not gonna be parochial at all about that. Uh, we would just figure out where the best location for the center is and 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 and, and, and plant it there. We could put it in the Sugarloaf shops right next to the other vendors. Well, you know, we put it in Tritown Beach and we spend 20 million, one spot. There you go. I love it. So that's yeah, I think, I, think, I think those three, I, I like it. Fred, what do you think? I think, yeah, that sounds good. Okay. As three priorities. And then make, Brian, you could even, believe try, it's fun. You could even for yeah. Tritown Beach talk about it in, in, in the context of, I don't know the exit number anymore, but the exit whatever economic development project, which Tritown Beach is going to be a centerpiece of. Yeah. And that too becomes an environmental project. Because environmentally, yeah. that's a bit of a mess now too. Right, electric charging stations site. everywhere. Yeah. Yes, charging stations. Well, at, at, at all three of these places, right? right? At the highway department, because we are going to get electric vehicles eventually. Uh, they already make electric pickup trucks now. They're going to, in no time, they'll be big enough for what we really need to do. It's not going to be that far down the road where you're not going to be able to find down. a combustion engine vehicle. Yeah. It just when when the Ford F one fifty starts to be an electric vehicle, you know the trend is moving as the number one seller in the country. Yeah. So no, and they already do it in other countries. Right. In fact, there's there's the countries where they use the um uh they, they they end up generating enough of their own electricity because they send it up the mountain empty and then they fill it up with rocks and then they take it down the mountain and you use the gravitational potential energy to charge the batteries back on the way down. And you don't end up spending a lot on electricity for charging, so. There's a driver in there, right? There's a driver, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'll say this much that certainly, you know, like the use of the highway department, like what Jonathan just mentioned, like the F-150, we don't usually encounter any long trips where we'd be needing mm -hmm. to try to charge on the road, so to speak. Right. So that it would certainly be within the realm of having an electric pickup yeah. truck that would, um, if you know, I heard numbers of roughly 300 miles per charge on the on the pickup trucks. That's that's very doable. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. 300 yep. miles for a pickup truck. That's amazing. Yep. For something that gets like two miles to the gallon ordinarily. So okay, um, I think we have our three. Do we have to vote on it, Brian, or can we just give it our blessing? I'll submit those to Natalie. It's, it's not anything official, I guess. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, and uh, there we go. Um, fuel bids. Oh, yeah, fuel bids. There's so my recommendation is that we award the fuel bid for fiscal year 
uh, 22 to Kiris for diesel and heating oil. We do um, we do gas through the uh, gasoline through the FERCOG. Um, they've always given us um, a local discount, and they've always they've always um, they've always delivered when we need it. Mike Keith, we haven't had any problems with them. Nope. Very well. Very good. And they're they're usually um, way under what what yeah. the the regional bids are. So we appreciate yeah their offer. Nice local company. Um, that I I move we award the um the bid to Karis for that's heating oil right heating and diesel yep heating and diesel second uh, all those in favor Joyce aye uh, Fred aye me yep okay application to the park program um, Brian I'll I'll give you some feedback. Um, the park program, just for, for Joyce and Fred's edification, um, is uh, a, a, a program that we're going to request a grant for Hurley. It's a requirement of the open space meeting or the open space uh, plan that we created. Um, and Brian can explain it, but last night the rec committee decided that we wanted to uh, request funding for... And... I'm pausing because it's a it's a money issue in terms of what we ultimately ask for. We certainly want to make Hurley handicap accessible. We want to make the pavilion hand the parking handicap accessible, the pavilion handicap accessible, and one of the bathrooms handicap accessible. Um, if we can pause, and Amy, correct me if I'm if I'm misremembering in the words of Roger Clemens. Um, <laughs> um, ideally, we would pave the entire driveway and parking lot. Um, but there was a question about whether that would just put us out of the competitive realm of possibility. But I, you know, looking at 2020 awards, you know, a town as small as Sun, I think it was Sunderland, not that we're as big as Sunderland, but we're in the grand scheme of things pretty darn close, um, received upwards of $250,000 for, I don't remember what. Um, it was a riverfront park, I think, wasn't it? Yeah, I think I think it was. So, um, I think it's the project, it's not the town size that people are looking at in terms of the viability of a grant proposal. Um, so again, I would love for it to include paving because the maintenance on that, the potholes in that, we can level it so that people aren't parking in huge puddles. Um, it's a safety issue because. I, I guarantee it. Some little kid's going to be chasing a soccer ball someday, and somebody's going to be going to be blind by by a, a bus that's parked there, and something bad's going to happen. And we need to get better control over this. And we also, you know, shame on us for not being handicap accessible already. So that was the recommendation to the board from the rec committee, um, and that you would work with Keith, Keith, and the guy who you met with at Hurley, and Brian would figure out how to price this out. Um, and the match would ideally come from in kind of Keith's crew. So I'll stop there. And Brian, you can expand on the, the grant for, the, for these guys if, if you want to. Yeah, so it's it's Parks Grant. It's uh, Parkland um, Acquisition and Renovations for Communities Grant Application. One of the conditions for reimbursement of the – when I spit out all these grant – program names for the community uh, small communities conservation assistance grant that paid for part of the open space recreation plan is is that we apply for what's called a land grant or a parks grant land is local acquisition to support natural diversity grant which um, we're not set up to do to acquire land right now um, mm -hmm. so we have to submit an application um, and it needs to be it needs to be on land that's article that's Article 97 protected or will be Article 97 protected. That's uh, part of the Massachusetts Constitution that it's a permanent protection on 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 conservation land or park land um, that requires a two thirds vote of the legislature to take it out. So it, it's, it's a, a pretty strong uh, restriction. So um, that's so I asked the rec commission, um, you know, what what would make sense and. We also did the ADH uh, 
evaluation and transition plan probably about two years ago when we were applying for the, uh, to try to get grant funding for the library improvements. Um, so, and, and one of the things that came up was was the, the lack of accessibility at Hurley in terms of parking, uh, the restrooms, access to the restrooms, um, even some work at, at around the concession stands and counter height and stuff like that, um, you know, really need to be addressed. And some walks from, from once the parking is paved, the walks from the parking to the concession stand to the restrooms. Right now there's a, I don't know, 10, eight, 10 inch lip, you know, to get up to the concrete slab, which someone, if they had mobility issues, were in a wheelchair, couldn't navigate. Yeah. Um, Oh, so, and, and the other idea was also that there's been a lot of talk because um, there are no play structures down there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was another thing. Uh, myself, uh, Keith, Amy, and Wayne, we met somebody from uh, one of the place, one of the play structure companies to have a conversation about, you know, getting some play equipment down there. Um, so that's, I think those were the options that the rec committee, the rec committee was discussing. Um, and the we, play just structure. Think, we didn't think the play structure was sexy enough <laughs> for Grant. Um, yeah, and that's something that that could be. It, it's I think it's more it, it's more CPA eligible. I think in terms of play structure and equipment like that. I'm not sure that the CPA would look kindly on uh, paving a <laughs> paving a driveway. And, um, and organizing down there is the the need is even greater because now. You know, before we'll use the spring as the example. You had trans at transition time, high school or middle school baseball leaving, um, rec baseball arriving, adult baseball in the ninety foot di diamond arriving. Um, you had a parking real a real challenge with parking. That need for organization is enhanced now with the softball field. So you add to the baseball stuff. The, the, the use of the softball field, again, when we're back to normal next year, especially, it, it's going to be the Wild West down there unless we can figure out a, a, a parking pattern uh, with, you know, good traffic engineers and, and, and that kind of stuff to help us with the whole package of ADA compliance and safety and probably a little bit of environmental as well. Uh, because I know we do not, Keith, correct me if I'm wrong, but, and I didn't realize this, we don't own up to the fence line. The state owns up to the fence fence line, that grass area after the gravel. Um, so that adds complexity. It, it varies as you go along the, the that, that embankment. And that was given, you know, deeded to the state many, many years ago when Waitley acquired Hurley he, in the aspect of should there be any um, landslides or anything like that, that the town wouldn't have to spend town money to do repairs that would be on the state's dime. Yeah. So yeah, it's, a, it's a 25 foot right away, I think. We it's had to take awesome. that into account when the softball field was built to and make sure that the, they still had their right away. That's, that's going to be the future path to the river for the boat ramp, but exactly. Mm hmm. And that's, that's a whole nother conversation. Um, okay, so that's our recommendation. I, I, and do you ever have any questions before I make a motion? No. Okay. I, I'd like to make a motion then that um, that the town of Waitley uh, apply for a park grant for the parking, the, the paving, uh, safety and ADA compliance of the geographic footprint starting with the driveway and going all the way through the parking lot to the end of the of lot by the softball field uh, and then add the appropriate ADA compliance with the correct number of parking lot parking spaces for handicap uh, compliance um, ramps to the to um, the pavilion. pavilion, and probably you need to make a, a wider door on one of those bathrooms. And there'll need to be some interior improvements on the bathrooms as well. Yeah. In terms of railings and, and toilet height and sink height and things like that. Yes. All right. I'll, I'll second. second. Yeah. Um, all those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me? Yep. 
Okay. Thank you. And the last thing is Brian's very short list of unanticipated items. Town administrator updates me. Um, I uh, just want to remind her about end of year, uh, end of fiscal year closeout. Um, for anyone who has invoices, the last warrant for fiscal year 21 will be July 15th. That's Thursday, July 15th. Um, so it's great to get those in because nobody likes a special town meeting for paying prior year's bills. Yep. It requires a nine tenths vote. Um, if you need to encumber funds, um, that needs to be submitted by July 16th. Um, and I've, and if you need to do carry forward requests, um, the accountant wanted them by today. She's on vacation, so let's say, you know, Monday. Um, um, in terms of, uh, so annual town meeting funded the, uh, the community development position. Um, so I need to work on that job description. Um, and that's something that we'll need to bring um, to the personnel committee and, and have those discussions. Um, in terms of the uh, CLFRF, coronavirus local fiscal relief recovery funds, um, I had included in the, in the packet the, a memo about the eligible uses. Um, I think that that would be a good discussion for us to have um, with the select board. Um, and I don't know if we want to involve finance uh, in terms of how we're going to spend those funds. Um, it's, it's probably good to get some idea of of a spending plan so that it doesn't become the wild west as to, mm -hmm. um, and, and also it'd be good to identify needs and instead of spending, you know, three fourths of it on something. And then six months later we say, Oh, we need it for this. And then it's already, uh, already, already spent out. So, um, if, if that's okay, I'll add that to the next meeting agenda, uh, for that's us. To talk about. Item. Um, and an update on the water merger project. So Fred, I'll give you the, 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 the quick update. Um, so in terms of the, so what's been, what's been slowing it down over the past couple months, it, it has been the easement acquisition. Uh, there's an easement through there now um, for the, for the right away. I think it's 20 feet wide, 30 feet wide. This is um, through the Quan, the Quan Quan land. Yeah. 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 And when, so prior to us acquiring the, in addition um, an expanded easement on that. The uh, town council did a title search, and there were some defects that that we need remedied in the in the owner's deed. So that's taking place right now. Um, I've I've been on the emails back and forth, but um, their attorneys know that it's something that we're trying to push. Um, and then also there's there's been this there's been a discussion about between the water commissioners and the select board. And maybe this is also for, for next meeting in terms of, in terms of hookup fees and economic hardships. Mm -hmm. um, the select board seems more, um, more willing to want to provide economic hardship assistance, whereas, and I, I'm probably not saying this correctly, but the water commissioners don't feel that there's a need to do that. Um, so I, I guess we need to know what to do. Uh, you know, yeah. Wayne needs to send out the agreements, the, the customer agreements. Um, and if there's going to be some type of, um, I, I draft up a quick extended payment plan idea. Um, but we really just need to know what, yeah. how we want to move that forward. I, I continue to believe that the bond issue that was made back in 19, what year 87? was the water done? 87 was a pretty good economic benefit to the people who got water because they had to get water. It wasn't called economic hardship, but I'm sure it helped a lot of people who didn't have the money to 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 float something like that on their own, um, and the people in the center of Waitley, some of whom do not need help, but others might. So, shame on us if we don't make the offer available to those who would like to apply using formulas that are very common in terms of demonstration 
of economic hardship and they can do it very quietly so that there's no there's there, there's there's no shame involved and some people will feel shame sadly um, but who are we as a community if we don't offer people help who need help so that they can have a little bit of water that's where I stand and that's where I'm always going to stand. And if the water commissioners want to have a conversation with me independently about it, I'm fine with that. But that's so, where I stand. Yeah. So Brian, are you suggesting this be on like the next meeting with the water commissioners? Yeah. I, I mean, if they need to send the, they need to send the contracts out, we need to borrow the money and, you know, we need to know, you know, I would like, if there's going to be a program in place to also send that out at the same time so people know. Um, so yeah, I, I would think it, it's either the it's either the there's going to be a, a come together moment or if the select board wants to do it, I think it's going to be a program that's offered solely by the select board. Okay, but this is the discussion that would be for the next meeting. Yeah, yeah and also I would ask that before that meeting if you could take a look at the that sheet that I, or that couple pager that I put together for the proposed plan. Um, okay. And that's in the I, um, meeting materials for. Yeah, it was a separate attachment on that. Separate, oh, the same okay, email. Okay, got it. Same yeah. email to the attachment. Okay. Can you invite water commissioners into the next meeting? Yep. Yep. And, it, and, it, and, and, and we just, and if they don't show up, we got to table it because they've got to be there. Then, then I, I, I say I, I, that'll be tough if they don't. Let's put it that way, because I mean mm. they're going to be incurring expenses really quickly. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying they won't. I'm just saying that you know it's it's July. People are on vacation, etc. We got to make this happen, but we've got to have everyone together. Yep. Yep. Um, I have some contracts that need to be signed. Um, and they're signed by the board. That's some for cog contracts. So we, just, we appointed them for a town accountant and uh, inspection services. So I have some agreements that'll be in the place at the town offices. Um, By when? Um, it doesn't say as soon as we can. Okay. There's no, there's no yeah. deadline for it. You should email out to so that we know when it's in the place. Yep. Okay. It'll be, well, it'll be in the place before I leave today. Oh, okay. Okay, as long as it's not a Friday. <laughs> well, that's I, right. Fred, you need oh, to get a key. You need you to get need your to get key, key if you haven't already been given it. What? I need what? Yeah. We have a security clearance form you need to complete first, though. Yeah. When are we going to get rid of the keys, by the way, and use a key fob and come into the 21st century? I think sometime in the middle of the 22nd. Right. Yeah. Probably, probably when the capital improvement committee recommends it for the budget. Right. There you I go. Think, um, uh, put forward a motion to adjourn. Oh, uh, I've, I've got one little thing, if I may. Oh, geez. Okay. There you go. Yeah. The webs, the yarn store in Northampton has introduced a new yarn in their Valley series and it is Waitley. Woo. So this is, their current catalog where it's being announced. And so that's, that's the front cover of the catalog. And Brian, do you have the other page? I should. That is, there it is. I'm confused. What is this? It's a name of a yarn that they, they have a, a series of yeah. yarns named after towns in the valley. Oh. And previously they did not have Whiteley and now they do. All right. Here we go, Valley so, Yarns. So for people who want yarn named after Waitley, and there's a nice little write-up of the town and how lovely it is in this current catalog, which yeah. goes out to tens of thousands of people. Lovely, and apparently a nice shade of brown. Soap. Well, it comes in multiple shades, I'm sure. Um, I, but, it's, but it's all shades of brown. It's not like you can't get green or blue. No, I'm. I'm I think it's the... Uh, the quality of the yarn and nature of the yarn, not the dye. It oh. can be dyed. Oh, okay. Got uh, it. Diff different colors. But just thought everyone should be aware of that. 
And this is a, a this is an online store. This is not a, a brick well. No, it's it's a big store down in Northampton with a huge online presence as well. But yeah. it's the their main store is a big facility in the next block up from the Nita uh, Nita whatever. Oh, it's in that cannabis th store of of North Pleasant Street. It's yeah, in that, it's, that, it's that, just that, off Con Street. I got you. Okay. In Northampton, no, it's it's a big operation. As I said, the catalog goes out to thousands and thousands of people. Yeah. So people fly we're, we're in. We're on from their map the now. World. Right. Cool. Great. Thank uh -huh. you, Fred. And, and can we talk about about the next meeting? Next meeting dates. Oh, sure. So. Calendar here. Uh, from July twelfth to July sixteenth, that nobody nobody robbed my house. Um, I have a rescheduled Disney trip that I owe my kids. So I will not be around on July 14th. This was COVID canceled last year to their disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So could we meet the 21st, July 21st or the 28th? 21st is fine with me. Yeah, yeah 21st is good. I think the 21st is safer because I honestly am trying to get away this summer and I have no idea when it's going to be, but it might be the 28th. Of course, it could be the 5th, the 12th, the whatever too, but so, yeah. Okay. So our next meeting will be not the 21st. July 14th is the 21st. First. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. Joyce, what did I hear you say? I moved to adjourn. Fred, what did I hear you say? I thought I heard me say second. All right. All those in favor, Joyce? Aye. Fred? Aye. Me, yep. Okay. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night.